How's your con been so far? It's great, actually. I mean, it's non-stop. It's, it, and the day is just flying by. We're nearly, we're nearly on the panel. And our feet have not touched the ground. Is it, was it as big? How much bigger is it than the first time you were here? Um, I just think it's more commercial than it was. When I was first here with Buffy, it was about comics and sci-fi and fantasy. And now it's, it's, it's become a media platform for the, for the industry, both TV and film industry, which is okay. But it's just as long as the, as long as the roots of it don't get to work. And the people who make it what it is. Will you sign my Buffy picture for me back in the day? So Did I? What <laughs> a nice person I am. <laughs> so, you've gotten a lot of attention on the fact that you're doing an American accent in this show. How's that been for you? Has it been well, challenging or pretty much? For me, I, 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 I've always done accents. I, I, you know, I, I, I didn't look to do an American accent. I, basically, I was cast as an American character. When I first put myself on tape, I actually put myself on tape for Channel Horizon. He's American too, and that was, played him differently from, from, from Wheel. Um, but Wheel, I kind of... Uh, I could have taken the easy way out and made him sort of like a bit of a redneck. But I wanted him to be a bang and smooth. So as far as I'm concerned, I think the American, you know, I, I, nobody said, would you, you know, what do you think about American accent? From the outset, it was being cast in America. We're a mixture of Brits, Americans, and Australians, and South Africans. So, you know, everybody is, is doing an American accent. So I'm not the only one. I, don't, I know I haven't got singled out. I was saying, why didn't they, did nobody sort of did any of this when I did a German accent in Warehouse 13? Uh, and not only did I do that, but in the last episode that I was in Warehouse 13, I did like a modern German and a, a, a more kind of urbane European version. Nobody had a problem with that. <laughs> Americans, we don't hear those differences, but we would hear it if we were American. You don't? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I hope my American accent is not. Uh, it doesn't seem to be that that's been the problem, it's the mere fact that I'm doing one at the time. We just know you as Giles. I know, but things have changed. If I was just Giles again, I'd be like, oh, there's Giles. <laughs> And I, you know, and I, then I'd have to put glasses on, and I'd have to take them off and wipe them a lot. And, uh, so what's and I'd it, have to drink tea. <laughs> what's it like playing this completely different guy from, from Giles? Like, this guy's like, almost like a used car salesman type of... Um, it's, I mean, that's what I love about this, this, this game. I mean, ultimately, this, you know, um, I don't know if any of you saw Merlin, but I got, you know, Uther was a, a, another complete, you know, and he was a, a bit of an asshole, excuse the expression. Um, but he, you know, he, he was just an old-fashioned king and an old-fashioned father who happened to do some fairly despicable things. Um, in the name of trying to keep the kingdom together, David Wheel has done a few fairly despicable things. Um, but I was saying over there, you know, he didn't, he didn't kill Bixby easily. Um, he had a little bit of pain, but it had to be done. So, did your character see everything as an opportunity? Um, I think especially the situation with William. Um, uh, which situation? Um, like, like, you have to admit, most of us, if not all of us, have not seen the last night's episode because we Sorry about that, because it was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it was absolutely fantastic. So, Roxanne and, and Amy, Roxanne McKee, Amy Bailey, knocked out the park. Beautiful, beautiful scene. Absolutely beautiful. And heart rending. I mean, seriously, stuff like that. We all cried. Oh, good luck. But, um, <laughs> um, yeah, do I, do I, I, I don't, I mean, yes, there is a, there is a degree of opportunism, but I mean, ultimately, his, 
He tells himself that he's doing everything for the good of it. Um, it probably is self furtherance but um, I think you know, he was one of the founding fathers, and I think you know, the, the, the survival of the, the, the city, uh, the enclave as it is, is kind of. He feels it's his responsibility. So killing Bixby, as I say, was as far, you know, as, far as he's concerned, was a necessity. Thank you very much. You're like collecting. I've got a brace. They do. And how is it filming in South Africa? You're enjoying spending time down there? It's an amazing crew. It's a wonderful crew. They, they work with a little butter. Um, they do American hours, which is sort of like 14, 15, maybe 16 hour days occasionally. Um, they were exhausted by the time they finished this. Um, the food is stunning. The wine is amazing. Um, we all get on so well that we, you know, we have a really, really lovely time. Um, Cape Town is the most beautiful place. Um, it's, it's beautiful and it's ugly and it's rich and it's poor. It's one of those, you know, those strange kind of dichotomies that when you're in the middle of it, sort of looking around, you can kind of this could be so perfect. But um, their industry, their film industry, is, is, is blossoming and uh, there's some great, great talent there. So I'm hopeful it will be new wealth to a lot of people. There's a lot of, lot of guys who are involved in the crew that you know, don't have a lot of money, they've got drivers and things like that. We'll see. I hope we get to go back. <laughs> Final question, what uh, message do you have for the viewers as they get ready to watch the, remain, the rest of the season? Hang on to your hands. There's some, there's some shit going there. <laughs>